Hi, I'm Dara, and I've spent over 2,000 hours in a game called Valorant. I'll be frank with you, I never hit Radiant. My peak was actually Plat 3. But that never stopped me from trying every trick in the book to get better, including debt matches and a bunch of aim training. But there was one thing I hadn't tried yet. VOD review. VOD reviews? A VOD review. VOD reviewing and VOD review? VOD review. VOD review. We're gonna do a VOD review. Now, Valorant doesn't have a built-in replay system, so most people use a tool called Valorant Plant in combination recording your screen. Valor Plant is a tool that lets you model in-game events using a minimap-like system where you have pictures of the agents as well as their abilities, sort of like a whiteboard in soccer. Valor Plant is a great tool for teams because it allows you not only to create strategies but also share them by simply copying a link. It also has other features like voiceovers la 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 la, and a really cool animation system. Its most killer feature by far is its pseudo replay system that lets you replay key in-game events, which is pretty huge as it is the only way to actually review previous games in Valorant, aside from of course recording your screen. I used Valorant Plant for about a week, and the more plays I made, the more discontented I became with it. I started thinking, Fine. I'll do it myself. But before I could even start coding, I had to figure out exactly what I wanted to do differently. What were the things that really bugged me about Valor Plant? What features did I wish it had or what problems did I want to fix? First of all, when Valor Plant was first made, Valorant only had 16 agents, so the agent select menu was at the bottom of the screen. Inherently, fitting all of them down there wasn't a bad idea. Hell, even Valorant themselves did the same thing. But you see, as time went on, more and more agents kept getting added, and as of today, there are 28 agents in Valorant. That means that scroll bar is just gonna get longer and longer. Every single patch. Another thing, in order to save your strategies and be able to edit them later, you need a paid subscription. Which by itself is not an outrageous requirement. I get it, cloud storage isn't free. But the moment you cancel your subscription, you can't open, view, or edit any of the files that you save. And then the real killer, if you share the save strategy with a friend and they don't happen to have their subscription, they can't open it either. This behavior was actually so unintuitive that I caught a coach who uses Valor Plant every single day, by the way, run into this specific issue on a live stream. Matt, you gonna I keep grinding? your link. Why can't I find your... I, can screen shot this I pressed your link and I didn't uh it didn't come up, it just popped up Valor Plant. Oh, it didn't show oh it only shows it. for people with a Valor Plant subscription? That's dumb. I'll put an image in chat. That is dumb. Are you able to save playbooks <laughs> without a subscription? Nope, nope. Nope. Okay, I'm gonna uh I'll Venmo you thing so you can buy Valor Plant premium. No, do I really? <laughs> to make things more fun, I decided to add three requirements. Number one. The app should be local first, meaning everything should function without an internet connection. Two, it should be open source, just so I could flex it on my GitHub profile. And third, I will try to roll everything myself, meaning I won't use packages unless it's absolutely necessary for progress. Now it was time to actually start building the app. And the first step was picking a name. You might wonder, why would I choose a name so early in the process? But for me, having a name helps kickstart the design process. And I knew I needed something that captured just how ambitious this project was. And after some thought, I landed on the perfect code name, Icarus. Oh my god, who's this guy? Oh my god, why is he so hot? I'm gonna name my third child Icarus! Icarus saved my life! Can you hold my newborn, please? Thank you so much for the applause. Oh no, no, the honor is mine. So, does anyone have a question? Um, I have a question. Did you call it Icarus because your app is gonna burn and crash to the ground? You need to leave. Using the name, I searched up images on Google to create a mood board, and after that, I imported the map with my own project. The first thing I wanted to do was create a coordinate system that would allow for the map to scale with the screen size while keeping every element in its place, as this would be the most crucial and important part of my app, as every other feature is built upon it. So how did I go about it? Behold, the brilliant young programmer clearly writing every single line with no help whatsoever. Truly, a genius among mortals, proof that greatness can exist without AI.
With that done, I went on to implementing my next feature, drawing, which is really simple to implement in theory. All you had to do was capture the mouse position and draw lines to connect them. Well, in my case, it was kind of difficult because the painting function has the state separated from the rest of the code. So I would have to manually tell the computer when to update the screen. Meaning if done wrong, there was a lot of performance issues that could arise. To solve this, I implemented a simple solution, an update counter, <laughs> which I kid you not, is just a number that increases by one every time an update is made. This way, the UI knows exactly when to refresh while keeping the performance overhead minimal. After that, I transitioned to adding agents. This was pretty exciting for me because I get to fix one of the first issues with Valplant, the agent bar. My solution was to have the agent bar be vertical as I found that it used screen space way more efficiently. And put the agent bar vertically, I did, sort of. <laughs> This is when I realized that my UI design skills were not so great. But you know what they say, all things can be fixed with money. So I paid someone to design it. The design I got back was uh, far from perfect, but it worked well as a piece to take inspiration from. And with a few tweaks, it looked like this. <laughs> yeah, boy. Now that I was comfortable how everything looked, I decided to flesh out abilities. In Valenplant, when you play certain abilities, it shows you the area of effect. These AoEs have three groups. First is a circle AoE. This is stuff like Kiltra's alt and basically all Molly. Second is a square AoE. Think about stuff like Breach Alt and Waylay Alt. And the third one is just Astra's Wall. Making the circle AoE was relatively simple. In my implementation, I chose to add icons because for some reason Valenplant doesn't. Now, the issue was the square AoEs. The difficulty wasn't in displaying them. That was actually rather simple. The actual issue was figuring out how to get them to rotate. You see, every time I tried to rotate an ability, it would look something like this. I was so bewildered that I had to look at the source code for the transformation function, and I came across the culprit, alignment. In the rotation function, there are two values which do relatively the same thing, alignment and origin. Alignment lets you determine the points to rotate about using preset values like center, top, and bottom, while origin, which I needed for my implementation, lets you specifically determine the point to rotate about using x and y values. Now, what do you think would happen when alignment and origin are set at the same time? They get added together! Yippee! And upon further inspection, you realize that the rotation function actually secretly defaults alignment to center. So in order to actually get the origin to function properly, you had to manually set alignment to top left. After realizing this issue in the documentation, I filed the PR to the further repo, to which it was acknowledged and is currently on track to getting merged. With that done, I added text and images while also including indicators for ally and enemy agents. With all that wrapped up, I decided to add probably one of the most important parts of the app, saving. This was something I had to accomplish if this was ever going to become a viable replacement for Valplant. So I spent about a month working on a couple of iterations of the system, and I eventually arrived at one that I was satisfied with. With having users save their strategies within the app, and using JSON to export the files so they're shareable between individuals. And the JSON files actually came out to about 2 kilobytes of like size in general, which is like very good for like sharing stuff on Discord. With that done, I uploaded my app to the Microsoft Store, Vibe coded an info website so the app is actually searchable, and that was pretty much it. Now, with the way I've explained things, this might have seemed like a short endeavor, but in reality, this project actually took six months to complete. All this happened in between college applications, insane LinkedIn posts, almost dying of food poisoning, and finding out that I accidentally got an Amazon internship. But building this project taught me more than any class, YouTube tutorial, or even book ever could. And if you're thinking about starting your own project, just do it. You won't regret it. I also want to give a huge shout out to dev YouTubers like Primogen and T3Theo. Watching your videos daily kept my excitement for software development alive. And I learned a lot of cool concepts along the way. So that's kind of how my simple desire to get better at Valorant turned into a full blown software project. Icarus is out now, it's open source, and it's just getting started. If you want to try it, contribute, or just see what I broke this week, check out the link on the screen right now, and of course in the description as well. With that, I can finally get time to play the game instead of coding. Bye guys.